Wetlands are areas where water covers the soil all or part of the time. They are important features in the landscape because they protect and improve water quality, provide fish and wildlife habitats, store flood waters, and maintain surface water flow during dry periods. These valuable functions are the results of the unique natural characteristics as wetlands are among the most productive ecosystems in the world, comparable to rainforest and coral reefs. The greater Amanzule wetlands stretch from the Ankubra River estuary to the Ivory Coast border and cover the coastal plains of the Elembele and Jomoro districts in Ghana. Like any other wetlands, the greater Amanzule wetlands are important natural ecosystems because they serve as homes for migratory birds, feeding grounds for juvenile fishes, spawning grounds for fishes, carbon sinks, water purification systems, flood control, erosion control, tourist sites, etc. Despite their importance, they have not been accorded any conservation status by government or any other group. The Greater Amanzule Wetland Conservation Project is a partnership between Yampuano and the Coastal Sustainable Landscapes Project managed by the forest, U.S. Forest Service. Yampuano uh, is working at two different levels. We are working at the community level and also at the district level. At the community level, we have catalyzed the formation of community wetland conservation committees. These committees are involved in daily management of wetland uh, by undertaking activities such as wetland restoration, participatory mapping exercises, and study tours. Uh, through support for livelihood development, these committees are also being incentivized uh, to take more interest in wetland conservation activities and be stewards for the resource. What is being done now, based upon the findings of our previous project, is to take the ball and run with it by the Coastal Sustainable Landscape Project. So about 23 communities were selected. Uh, these communities have close relation with the wetlands. And uh, we are working closely with communities to be able to come up with a very big design where the communities would put forward a position where they would consider the whole Amazuri as one entity and therefore the resources within these communities would be managed by community people. At the district level, Yampuano is working with a, a district conservation committee which has recently been inaugurated. The function of the district level conservation committee is mainly to integrate conservation of the Amanzule wetlands and ecosystem services into the district medium term and special development plans. So the committee is primarily responsible for advising uh, the district government on issues of wetlands uh, use and uh, management and how that can be factored into district decision making processes. We promise the traditional councils that uh, the Amanzule could be in a very good position to source for a red plus funding. Our studies later showed that uh, the red mechanism uh, allows for very big areas, but considering that the total area of the Amanzule also into Ivory Coast is about 25,000 hectares. It is too small for uh, to qualify for a red mechanism and therefore 
what they call the plan vivo or the community conservation of these areas is very important so that uh, the resources in the area continue to provide people with their livelihoods. Based on findings, Two Amazule retreats were held in March 2012 and June 2013, during which a resolution was adopted and signed by the chiefs and other stakeholders to support all efforts aimed at attaining conservation status for the Greater Amazule wetlands with the slogan Yazanimo Yeklebi, meaning our wetlands, our future. These activities at the community and industry levels are providing the basis for uh, the formulation of a management framework to guide the long-term use and uh, further development of the Greater Amanzule Wetlands. Nyampuano, uh, through this uh, initiative, is working with the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission in the development of the management plan. A series of meetings have been held to look at a framework uh, that will provide a long-term view and perspective for uh, the wetland uh, management. Everybody bought into the idea and therefore uh, the agreement was that we call for a big retreat that we call the Greater Amanzuli Retreat which was held in the uh, Axim in 2012 which brought together all the traditional leaders, the community people, the uh, district authorities, assemblymen, youth groups, and others to think about how best we were able to manage the Amanzule area. And the way forward was that communities should be in the center of conserving this important wetland. They also opted for a management scenario called the Greater Amanzule Community Conservation Area, GACCA, with following structures. In Zimamanle, Greater Amanzule District Conservation Committee GADCC Greater Amanzule Community Conservation Committee GACCC Yampuano with funding from CSLP started carrying out a series of activities in 23 wetland communities in both Elembele and Jomoro districts aimed at putting the wetlands under conservation through a co-management regime the Coastal Sustainable Landscapes project is a three-year project which started from October of 2014 and is ending this September 2016. The goal of Coastal Sustainable Landscapes project is to enhance local capacities in the monitoring of ecosystems to promote low emission development in the six coastal districts of the western region. We all know that coastal wetlands in particular have very significant contribution they make for uh, fishes in the, in the ocean. The major one being the fact that most fishes, major ones come to spawn in the wetlands until and they nest themselves here until they are of some sizable uh, age before they get into the ocean. As a project which is interested in low emission development, it's uh, also established the fact that mangroves per unit area sequester more carbon than even terrestrial forests. And so putting all this together, we need to focus on the mangroves. Uh, the interest, the fact that if people have their livelihood improved while at the same time ensuring the management of the forest, that ensures much sustainability. The CSLP is collaborating with Ian Puano for the fact that CSLP itself is a follow-on project to the ICFG project. And the ICFG project, the Integrated Coastal Fisheries and uh, Governance Project. And then Yen Puano is, if I can say, a relic of the ICFG project. And this project, by the time it ended, had collected a wealth of information and data on uh, wetlands within these six coastal districts. The Yen Puano, for that matter, has had a huge interaction with varied stakeholders concerning what needs to be done to ensure sustainable management of the mangroves. And so it's worthwhile and very useful if we have to 
uh, get Hen Puan to follow on with what they have started already. The core management approach involves collaboration with the following stakeholders. Traditional leaders in communities which have wetlands. My name is Mieza Kofi. I'm the caretaker for Old Table Swazo. The secret to the beautiful mangrove we see over here is the education we receive from Yen Puano. Yen Puano educated us and also asked us not to uh, cut the mangroves over here. They also um, ask us to make sure that nobody also comes to a uh, cut mango. And since then, we've been doing that very well. We also have a committee that assists us to do that in this particular community. Since we started taking care of the mangroves, we've realized that uh, monkeys uh, who formerly weren't around have been coming here often and we see them move on the bridge uh, from time to time. We also realize that when we go uh, into the river for fishing, we get enough nowadays compared to when uh, we were cutting our mangroves. So we want to thank Hen Puano a lot for the education they've given us and which is the reason for the beautiful mango we see here today. No hare. The Everton won't take no one say. We used to get a lot of periwinkles, shrimps, and crabs from our mangroves and wetlands, which serve as food and source of income for us. Due to the harvesting, particularly of the mangroves, which is used for making charcoal in the past, most of the resources we derived from the wetlands began to diminish. There used to be lots of coconut trees around here, but most of them have been affected with some kind of disease and they've all perished. The mangroves have not been affected in any way with disease like the coconuts. We are the ones who destroy them. We have now been given the authority to ensure that nobody comes here to cut them for their personal benefit. And since we started practicing the conservation exercise, there has been a significant change. The lost benefits are gradually coming back. We believe that if we all help young Puano to make this project a success, we will reap the benefits together. This is because the depleted and destroyed benefits will surely be restored for us. The Regional Office of Wildlife Division of the Ghana Forestry Commission and the District Assembly has this to say. Since young Puano and the coastal sustainable landscape projects are all working in wetlands there's a need for us to collaborate the yen Puano projects have brought a lot of relief to the people of western region especially the, those along the coasts there's been a lot of attitudinal change towards the way we use wildlife and natural resources capacity building has taken place a lot of people have been trained right from government institutions to the communities one of the legacies left behind by the yen puano project was the attempt to put in a conservation measure for amanzuri wetlands this aspect of the work has been given to yen puano as an NGO to see to the institution of a management protocol for Amanzuri wetland. Here in Puanu, actually initiated a conversation of uh, wetlands in the districts. And actually they've done a lot of work in various communities. Okay, 
after a, a consultation, the meetings with all communities, they've now come to assembly, and assembly has now got uh, uh, established District Wetland Conservation Committee, or the, the, what we normally call as the Greater Amazule Conservation Committee, and which I happen to be the chairman. Uh, this committee actually works in, in collaboration with Yempuano as well, because the communities that are in the district, they take the initiative on themselves on what actually to do in these wetlands. The wetlands, normally we have a uh, mangrove. I uh, you know the mangrove is a, a good source of uh, carbon dioxide uh, protection. They absorb a lot of carbon dioxide. So we encourage them. Then when dealing with this uh, wetlands where we have the mangrove, and we know they depend on the mangroves for livelihood. And then when they harvest, there must be the means of plants of at least replanting. Replant so that uh, it will not end up uh, being depleted entirely. So that's what the various communities are doing and they have their own committees. And these committees meet on the days that they have selected themselves. And all activities, whatever they discuss there, they bring to us the committee over here. We have the responses from them. And then we, the committee here, also sit on it. After discussing and digesting everything, we forward it to uh, the District Assembly Subcommittee on Environment. Okay, that place it will continue to the Executive Committee. Then the Executive Committee will forward it to the General Assembly on the discussions being taken on uh, the, the, the protection and conservation of the wetlands in the districts. Finally, a system has been put in place where we have. First, the Greater Amanzuri Community Conservation Committee is formed. On top of that, we have the districts, that's Greater Amanzuri District Conservation Committees. And then, at the apex of it, we have the Nzimamanli. Um, we are trying to do this because there's been a number of interventions in that area. Some from the Ghana Wildlife Society, they have done a lot of research. They've done a lot of studies on that uh, wetland. And it is our hope that we will be able to, you know, base on the foundations that they have laid to come up with a very good and sound workable management plan that is, you know, uh, acceptable to all the communities around this wetland. I have to, to actually express my situation to Yen Puanu for taking the initiative. Be, be, be because people normally harvest these things and then it ends up being depleted. You don't have anything to put it back into the stream. And we know they depend on it as means of livelihood. And what Yen Puanu has done now is, as they harvest and they are even planting, or they cannot plant immediately, they, 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 they are giving them another source of uh, livelihood, alternative sources of livelihood. And then they have a lot of plants. Some, some, people, some people are into ma uh, mushroom uh, cultivation, some people are into vegetable cultivation, uh, animal hazard on some plant, uh, places. And I think it's a good thing that uh, Yen Puanu is doing. And we want to assure Yen Puanu that the district is always ready to ensure that the program is sustained. It's sustained and the people themselves take charge of what is happening there. Not that somebody has come to impose anything on them. So the decision lies with the communities, the people themselves, as we have oversight responsibilities over whatever they are doing. Two district level committees have been formed out of the 23 communities to help manage the wetlands. My name is Francis Kwesikwao and I'm the chairman for the conservation committee in this uh, community, that is Old Cable Swazo. As a committee, what we do is we prevent people from uh, cutting down the mangroves. We also don't allow people to encroach the mangroves for their farming and other things. As a committee, since we started doing this, we've realized that a lot of monkeys have come into the mangroves nowadays. 
ama nya fura beke akwa ku biala e ke dey aye anyiriere also when we go for fishing we get a lot of catch nowadays as a result of the uh, intervention from Henan Puano and the education we've received from them angba no kon oyi die baba ke anyire ma benu areke nga ka mo ka dey era samba bono so ni ke adwane sa mokola ani aho mu ngo me e go te yon beke ya ama ba nyin zuan elie but there are people who are very much concerned. They are not busy. We want to say a very big thank you to Yanim Puano, and we hope that they will continue to support us to conserve the mangrove. Friend McDonald, Mifri Anyanzi. My name is McDonald. I am the community conservation chairman for Nyanzini. My lady, can you please tell me about Yanim Puano? So, my baby boy, is a person. We want to thank the Yempono people for helping us conserve our wetlands. They have helped us to form a committee which sees to the protection of the wetland conservation. And I am the chairman for that committee. One of our duty is to gather the people over here and educate them on the importance of conserving the wetlands. We also monitor to make sure that nobody cuts the mangroves, raffia and bamboo trees along the water bodies for their personal use. And this is to help protect the wetlands. Yampuano people has also educated us on climate change, replanting and harvesting of the mangroves, and we are happy to be helping them make their work here successful. Finally, they help us to replant the trees which have been cut in the degraded areas to be restored. Community members have been sensitized and are willing to conserve the wetlands. My name is Abdullah Yaya. I am from Kangule. Yampuano people help us to form a committee which ensures the mangroves are protected for future use. They have also given us a lot of education on the various types of mangroves that we have and how to use them for our maximum benefits. They also help us to unite and work together as a team to help protect our environment. They also educated on how to go into organic vegetable farming as an alternative source of livelihood and how not to use chemicals in planting and spraying our crops to ensure a healthier and bounty harvest. My name is Faiza Ble. Uh, I'm a farmer from Kambuni. Formerly, we were doing uh, our farming, that is tomato farming, with fertilizer. But Yampuano came in to teach us how to go into organic vegetable farming. Since then, I've been doing my vegetable farm without fertilizer. And they taught us how to treat pests and uh, diseases by using pepper and garlic. So I mix pepper with garlic and spray it with my, uh, onto my tomatoes and uh, pepper. And by doing so, I've been seeing results. I encourage everybody to try some of these practices uh, as it's very good and we are seeing results. Uh, for the Greater Amanzule Wetland Conservation Committees to function effectively, we put together a number of uh, trainings which include trainings on how the wetland benefit their communities. For the conservation committees, we've also had trainings on uh, their individual roles or the role that is expected of them to play. We've also had trainings on teamwork 
and that is not all. A number of trainings, which include trainings on uh, climate smart agriculture, trainings on climate change, have been organized for them. All this training is expected to equip them and make them ready uh, to conserve the wetland whenever they are called on. And for the communities also to be motivated to work, we've put together a number of livelihood activities, which include uh, cassava plantations at uh, Okable Suazo and Egbazo. For a community like Kambuni, we've trained about 110 farmers in uh, organic vegetable farming. We've also trained about 21 people uh, in how to do beekeeping. And all this, we do it alongside the conservation. And we expect that whatever we do in relation to the livelihood will motivate the communities uh, to work hand in hand with Henan Puano and the Forestry Commission to conserve the wetlands which abounds in the greater Amanzule area. Where there is willingness, there is the way. The community people have demonstrated their willingness to put the Amanzule wetlands under conservation for future generations. Through the conservation uh, activities that Hempuano is undertaking in coordination with uh, partners such as the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission, the two district assemblies, Jomoro and Elembele, and uh, also uh, the Coastal Sustainable Landscapes Project, we see a future where the Amanzule wetland is protected for the present and future generations and also where the resources are utilized sustainably and in a way that will ensure perpetual flow of ecosystem goods and services. What we hope to achieve from this is that one, we should be able to put the greater Amanzuri in, into a conservation area with a conservation status so that uh, it is managed. Now we also want communities to realize that the resource is for them, it is not for government, it is the resource that provides them with livelihood and therefore they should take much care and manage it for the benefit of uh, today and those who are yet to be born. Looking at the wetland around, you can tell for a fact that uh, a success has been chalked in relation to the conservation of this particular mangrove. This is not the only mangrove that is doing very well. When you go to a community like Mitika, you go to a community like Manjia, Efasu, you also find similar mangroves that look green and very beautiful. And this points to the fact that as a project, we are actually achieving our aims. And we hope that uh, a lot can be done in relation to the conservation of the wetland in the greater Amanzule area. The Amanzule simply means that uh, water for the community. And this water must continue to be there. Our wetlands, our heritage. And if it is our heritage, uh, we must be able to protect it for posterity. Yazanemo, Yeklebi, our wetlands, our future.